Okay, welcome back. We're going to continue with this basic JSON API that uh, we created. And to review, we could just use this API in, a, let's say, a single page app in Backbone. But instead, we are going to build this um, basic CRUD web application in the spirit of a Rails scaffold. So let's turn to the user controller. And through the magic of copy and paste, I'm going to put some code in this user controller that we'll go over. OK, now we have all of our uh, actions in our controller. And I'm going to go in depth into this index action. Uh, if you haven't fallen asleep or fallen into a coma or otherwise actually want to listen to me go over the rest of these actions, I'm going to do that in a separate screencast. So before we get started, let's go over to the right here and go back into our Rails file and grab the user controller so we have something kind of to compare it to since we're doing this kind of as a Rails-focused look at Sales.js. So in the uh, index action on the Rails side, we have a, an instance variable and we're going out and looking at the model and grabbing any records that are part of that model, which is a good segue into looking at our model on the sales.js side. This is the one we generated at the beginning of the project. And we have, of course, name and email as fields. You might be asking yourself, gosh, how did we get the migration? How do we have a database? What is our database? Okay, well, the, the good news is sales takes, you know, the heavy lifting of migrations off your back and does these automatically behind the scenes. So when you start sales, when you when you lift sales, it's going to go out and for a schema uh, database, it's going to go out and create your tables and your fields. It's going to look at your model and determine what it needs to build in your database, which begs the question by default, what database is sales using? It is using an in-memory database. It has the full capacity for a variety of different databases, both schema and schemaless. You can go to the GitHub site and see uh, the adapters. I plan on doing uh, additional screencasts for how to implement those databases. Probably going to do my uh, SQL first. And I encourage y'all, leave me comments, uh, leave questions. You know, Let me know what you want to learn, uh, and I'll learn it and pass it on. But by default, we're using an in-memory database that's going to basically clear the database out for development pur purposes. It's going to clean the database out every time we restart the server. And that's what I'm using right now. So going back to the user controller, this uh, index action, very similar to what's going on in Rails. In this case, we're using an instance variable um, at users. We're going out and looking at that model. We're doing the same thing or similar thing in JavaScript here. We have the user object and we have this method called find all. And so it's going out to the user model. And another thing that you might be wondering right now is, well, wait a minute, without a route, how is sales determining, you know, if I, if I'm in slash user, how does it know the difference between slash user, slash user create, slash user with an ID of one? How is routing taking place? Well, another great thing about sales is it can build or look for those routes automatically. So what it's doing is when it needs to find and interpret a route, it's first going to look for an explicit route in a config in the config folder under routes.js. But of course, we haven't you know, created an explicit route. So next, it's going to look to the params. And if it sees something like slash user or slash user uh, slash update, it can figure out that, well, wait a minute, we're probably looking for, uh, there's probably a user controller. And within that user controller, there's most likely an action called update or most likely an action uh, of create. So a lot of the, the routing is done for you behind the scenes. You can be explicit about it. You can do your own thing. But sales you're going to find is often going to take away the drudgery of having to do things that really 
it should be able to interpret for you. And in this case, it does. All right, so where was I? Find all. So this is a common pattern in both, in both anonymous functions and named functions. You're gonna see that we're gonna use this method find all, and we're gonna have this anonymous function that is either gonna return an error or it's gonna return that it got some data and in this case users so if there's an error it's going to return the error in a 500 if it actually finds some users it's going to pass that response in a view and within that view method we can pass data we can pass the model we can pass users and we're going to do that within the index right now so let's look at the index.ejs file and you know what i'm going to do the same on this side, on the Rails side. And we can see that I've built two almost identical uh, tables. And the way I've iterated through our user object, I've done it in two ways. I've commented out this first approach, which is straight ahead, for in JavaScript, JavaScript loop. But this iteration using this uh, dot each method is using a library that I've really started to like. Um, it's called underscore. And underscore, I think they call it the utility belt of Node, makes it really easy to have a bunch of different methods to be able to get at our data. In this case, it's very similar to Ruby each, but it's going through our object, letting us iterate through that and giving us access to, to name and email. Now these paths here show edit and delete uh, as well as new user. I'm going to go over that in in the next screencast, but let's see what we've done to this point. So we have our index user controller action. It's pointing to a template, this EJS file, and let's see what it's doing here. And yay. All right. We're getting a, uh, we're getting an index of all of our users. So by Joe, this thing is working. All right, great. So like I said, the next section will go over all of the other CRUD actions. Hope to see you on, on the next video. Uh, if not, leave me, leave me comments, tell me what you like, what you don't like. This kind of gives you at least your first foray into a MVC framework on Node, Sales.js. Thanks a lot.